Hi guys, I'm Jack Adair from Canon Europe, um, giving you the warmest welcomes to our stand at IBC 2022. Uh, after two years away, uh, it's great to finally return to the Rye in Amsterdam uh, and share all our wonderful new products and solutions with you all. Uh, I'm here with Dave, who's going to be your presenter um, for the duration of the show. So without further ado, we're going to start a stand tour. So Dave, please take Hello, it away. Dave. Hello, welcome. Come explore the stand with us. Perfect. So Jack, where are we here? So we this is our pro video section, uh, pro video camcorders. Uh, for those of you that have kept an eye uh, on the use, these are the two new XA camcorders. Uh, so we have the XA70 here uh, with the 4K one inch sensor, 15 times zoom, and the XA65 um, with the half point three inch sensor, 20 times zoom. Um, both cameras compact, perfect for things like ENG style documentary run and gun shooting. Just behind you there, uh, we have the XF605, which launched last year. Really, really powerful camera, perfect for ENG news gathering. Got the Digic DV7 processor, dual SD card slots, obviously the 4K 15 time zoom lens, um, as well as uh, FTP and live streaming functions built in as well. So all of these cameras, really good run and gun packages. Perfect, and this zone that we're on at the moment, this is the touch and try this zone? This is the touch and try zone, so obviously, um, as I mentioned, you've got the XA here. We'll go around shortly and see our section of mirrorless cameras, and then we have our cinema cameras as well. Uh, and obviously, for anyone coming down, uh, we have all our experts on hand uh, who can take care of any questions that you may have. Good place to come down, get hands on with the kit. Uh, as Jack said, ask questions, figure out how they work and which one might be the right solution for you. So we'll move on this way. Yep. So here, as I mentioned, we have our mirrorless section. Um, so we've obviously got the ever popular R5, uh, the R3, which launched last year, uh, the new EOS R7 with the APS-C sensor in the new lens, uh, and of course, the first hybrid stills and video camera uh, launched last year, the EOS, or beginning of this year, sorry, the EOS R5C. Uh, really powerful 8K video and 45 megapixel stills. So very, very powerful package for those wanting to shoot in stills and video. So perfect for people like wedding videographers and Absolutely. people that need to switch between the two quickly. Perfect, and then we'll come around this side to, well, the cinema cameras. Cinema so cameras, so we've got two home. here, indeed. So we've got the EOS C500 Mark II, uh, full frame 5.9K, really, really powerful cinema camera, uh, paired with a Samire lens, which as we know, gives you those beautiful, pleasing skin tones uh, and depth of fields. Uh, and with the camera that launched uh, a few years ago, the, the EOS C70, a powerful compact sensor that's got that 4K DGO sensor, the dual gain output that gives that 16 plus stops of dynamic range, which for a small camcorder like that is giving people so many more opportunities Absolutely. to get the best out of their productions. Perfect. And then at the back, we're not going to go through all of them. That's fine. We've but just at the back. Got, yeah, so we just have kind of a range of everything we do here. So you'll see we've got a few cinema cameras in the top, uh, some, some of our accessories here for broadcast, um, range of cinema lenses at the back there. And if you track along, you'll see we've got the EF and RF glass uh, and some broadcast lenses and some more accessories in the corner there. So here we are now at, well, it says 10 years of EOS, Jack, but that... Technically, it's 11 years now. Um, obviously, with IBC not happening last year, this was a big celebration for our, uh, for our company and our brand. Um, so we wanted the opportunity to celebrate it. So even though it happened last year, all the team put a lot of effort into getting a lot of things, a lot of content together um, to really celebrate this milestone in our history. So we thought we just had to do it again. We had to absolutely do it again. Even though it's 11 year, the 10 year celebration is still going strong with our customers. So we do have a, a, a strong lineup of uh, all our Cinema EOS products. This does today. look like everything right from the, from the very it beginning is. all the way up, doesn't it? Yep, so we have right back way, way back when in 2011, the EOS C300. Um, and then we obviously bought out our compact Zinema zoom lenses. Uh, interesting that EOS 1DC, this was very, very revolutionary camera. Great camera. Um, one of the first times you were getting proper, proper powerful video in that sort of form factor. Um, and then obviously we have the EF Cinema Primes. These are still very popular to this day. And you can see EOS 100, the 500 and then the C100. It's, it's kind of the whole range through the history. C700 FF first powerful, powerful full-frame cinema camera that we bought out um, by the C200, the compact servos. Now these lenses are kind of a perfect blend um, between a kind of compact EF style um, with that cine lens performance as well. So another very good lens. 
C500 Mark II, this is when we first took our step into having a modular system. Mm -hmm. So um, as I pointed out on the touch and try zone, if anyone can come down and have a look, it's the first time we made accessories which sure. are interchangeable, which I'll get them to the C300 Mark III there. You'll see they have the same form factor. This is done deliberately. So if people are using them as an A and B cam, you can have the same nice accessories. Switch them out. Don't need to switch. Yeah, and we did jump over the Samiri in the middle because I did talk about it on the touch and try, but again, Beautiful, beautiful image quality from those lenses. So, um, the skin tone is the outer focus highlights. On absolutely the beautiful, really yeah. Really, really nice lens. Um, and then going to the C70 and the R5C again, that powerful 4K um, DGO sensor that we mentioned on the touch mm -hmm. and try, and obviously the R5C, that first video hybrid that really is kind of bringing the two worlds together. Perfect. So, 10, 11 years of Cinema Rios. Yeah. Um, it's a nice little history lesson. Yeah. Kind of walk down here looking at mm -hmm. all the ones I've used and yeah. maybe the ones that I skipped out on and maybe should have used. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, lovely to see. So what have we got here? So what we've got here um, is an extended reality studio production. So these are becoming a lot more popular now, television productions, because it gives people a lot more flexibility uh, for things like commercial music videos, even um, cinema using it because you can have various different backgrounds. You can be on a beach, you can be up a mountain, you can be rolling hills, all these places, but yet you can still be on the same set. Mm -hmm. So it can hugely save costs on crewing, traveling, things like that, yep. and gives you huge flexibility. So then you think an LED screen, obviously doesn't have the same performance as a natural background. So what we've done here is we've partnered with an industry leading um, XR production company, Mosis. Um, so powered with our cameras and lenses and their star tracker system, this can accurately read the metadata and positional information of the lens. Okay. So what you have is the backdrop, as you can see here, we've got a Western scene. What the camera will do as you focus, pan, side to side, zoom, the background will react as okay. a natural background would. So this gives the impression that even though the background is virtual, it makes it much more realistic for the audience. Okay. So again, powered with these systems, it's just opening up a world of opportunities and it is becoming more and more popular. Fabulous. So what cameras have we got on display here? So the cameras uh, that we have on display, obviously this is with our cinema range. So we have C500 Mark II um, paired with the, that's the 50 millimeter Samire. We also have the C500 Mark II again, here with one of our brand new flex zoom lenses. Um, so this year we launched two as a pair, which uh, we'll see again over there, but just to cover quickly, uh, the CNE 20 to 50 mil millimeter T2.4. There is also a 45 to 135 millimeter T2.4. The cool thing about these lenses, as well as having the Zeiss extended data and Cook Eye technology to communicate with these sorts of systems, they both have a constant va a T value of T2.4 across the entire zoom range. Okay. So there's no loss. So that is one of the fastest zoom lenses yeah, currently yeah, in the industry to keep that constant range uh, throughout. Sure. Okay. So the C300 Mark III, and this goes back to that modularity I was talking to you about um, on the 10 year of Cinema EOS. Um, this is paired with CN 10 by 25. These are our cine servo lenses. Mm -hmm. And a bit like the compact servo lenses that I mentioned to you back there, these are a marriage between cinema technology and broadcast and ENG technology that really bring the two together. Um, for an application like this, they're perfect. But this lens here, you can also use for sports production, things like that, because with its 1.5 times extender, um, you actually get coverage for full frame sensors as well as Super 35. So they're a double edged sword, essentially. Perfect. So Super interesting zone. Um, I would urge people to come down and have a look at this because yeah. trying to explain it is challenging, but when you see it in action, it exactly. kind of makes a lot more sense. Try, isn't it? Trying to fit in a description in this video with the time we have, I think you, you have to come down and see it because it's so clever, all the technologies into this and the amount of people that have worked on getting this solution here mm -hmm. and with us with Mosis and the, the other partners, Quasar Science and Alpha Light. It, it's, so much work's gone into this that you have to come down simply. It's interesting and check this as out. well to see the integration. It's not, mm. you know, you've got a Canon solution, but integrating into yes. a real live workflow environment for a production. A hundred percent, yeah. Fabulous. Okay, uh, we're going to move on over and have a look at the displays. I yes, think. No, yep. Perfect. Okay, so 
here we are at the displays, obviously Canon, yep. not just cameras and lenses, but we have displays as well, and mm -hmm. I think there's some new products here. And Yeah, uh, just 100%. Talk us this and, and what um, so yeah, we have a range of professional display solutions um, for a number of applications, namely post-production, um, outside broadcast, on-set monitoring, we have a solution for it. So here we got the brand, uh, well, brand new, uh, launched just last year. Unfortunately, we didn't get to show it at last year's IBC. Um, so this is the DPV 1830, 18-inch uh, 4K UHD professional monitor. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing about this monitor and kind of all of the monitors in this range is the sheer amount of um, editing tools and that we have built into these. Um, as you can see from the list up here, the list is extensive, so whether you're working in a live environment, post environment, any tool you need to get the most out of your footage is contained in all of these displays here. So again, the 1830, this is perfect, as I say, a bit more for kind of DITs, onset monitoring, OB situations and a thing like that. So very exciting. The next display we have, this is the brand new DPV 2730. This came out only a couple of days ago. 27 inch monitor, 1000 nit brightness. Um, really interesting thing about this one. So going into the 27 inch market, it's a bit smaller than the 31s, which are tradi traditionally used for post-production workflows and things like that. Since COVID's happened and things like that, there are a lot more people now self-editing, self-editing in their homes. This is a bit more compact, but you still have a large enough screen really sure. to kind of see that detail um, and get the most out of your work. Yeah, I think very much from a, from a home editing suite, 27 inch is quite a nice sweet spot mm. of, of screen size. It's not taking up all of your desk, yes. but it's still giving you enough, enough screen real estate to, mm -hmm. to not just see your footage, but also make use of all of these things while still getting a decent view. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Um, here we have the flagship model. This is the DPV3120 native 4K monitor, um, 2000 in its peak brightness, really, really powerful. Uh, all of these in the range as well obviously have 12G SDI connectivity um, as well as SDI. Um, so again, you're kind of spoiled for choice when uh, looking at any of these as a solution for your workflow. Perfect. So that's the monitors. Uh, I think we're going to take a little tour. Yep. Around here, we've got a bit of EOS R system, so move away from the cinema space. Indeed. Have a look at some of the, the newer products, yeah. I guess. So back to the mirror. These are obviously really exciting that launched recently. Uh, this is using, obviously, the RF mount, but with the APS-C sensor. So again, two very powerful cameras, the R7 and the R10, and obviously the lenses that have been launched uh, to sit along with these as well. So we have the 24 millimeter f1.8 macro, uh, and obviously the RF 15 to 30, 4.5 to 6.3. It's really nice to see these here as well, since mm. it's a broadcast show, but actually, yep. you know, some of the video capabilities of these, they make great crash cams or Perfect. B cams, or, you know, if you're not at this kind of level of production, yeah you can start with these exactly. and work your way through the system and have that system familiarity. Mm. And I think the other perfect thing with these is obviously looking back at the R5C, where we say that is the perfect marriage between photo and video. For those who are potentially more slightly on the photo side, um, paired obviously with the, with the larger RF versions, the R5, R6, these are also a perfect solution for those who might be stills who have to shoot a bit of video as well. The video quality coming out of these cameras is incredible. So. Perfect, okay. Uh, I think we'll come around this way. Yep. Uh, and we're moving into some XA. Yep. Okay. Um, so these cameras, obviously, we covered a bit briefly on Touch and Try, but just to run you through the features again. Um, you see four models here. Uh, there's also a consumer model which has been launched as well, the Legria HFG70. Mm -hmm. um, to go to these models, um, you'll see we have the XA70 and XA75. So these feature a one inch 4K UHD sensor, 15 times zoom lens. Um, they also have uh, on-screen display recording in both the models. Um, so obviously that's important for any time you need to record time and date information in footage. Um, it has infrared mode, so you can film in really, really low light to near dark situations. Um, there's also addition of um, USB-C. Okay. So for any lecture recording, things like that, you can stream via UVC as well across both of these models, uh, which leads me on to the XA60-65, basically the smaller sibling of these two. Very much similar form factor, but a more compact size. So half point three um, type image uh, CMOS sensor, um, as well as a 20 times zoom lens. I think the good way to kind of look at the differences between these is if image quality is your key, 
you'd go for the 7075. Sure. If you need compactness and speed and lightweight mm -hmm. for quick run and gun, yep. then I'd definitely suggest the 65 and XA60. Perfect. So that's XA. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get around to some quite interesting stuff. And we're going to spend a bit more time talking about these when we yes. go over there. But maybe a little top line on some of these, uh, yes. or some of these PTZ cameras. So, we only launched our PTZ range last year, um, and since then it's already becoming very, very popular and moving very, very fast. So we've now been introducing, we now have five PTZ cameras within the range. Um, here we have the CRN 700. Uh, this was launched just a couple of days ago. Really, really powerful PTZ camera. Um, so 4K UHD sensor, 15 times zoom lens, but obviously 30 times advanced zoom in full HD really powerful thing for the professional broadcasters it has 12g sdi which you can achieve 4k 60p over as we know hdmi for 4k 60p it also does 4k 60p over lan as well okay. which also does the poe plus powering um, as well as that it's got four uh, two professional xlr audio inputs um, and if we're speaking about connectivity um, obviously it has that all important srt protocol really big for the broadcasters, NDI 8 checks, um, RTMP, RTSP, all the popular streaming protocols that you might need are in this camera. And we also have our own control protocol that we developed last year, the XC protocol. Uh, so it integrates seamlessly with Canon Cinema EOS um, and XF products as okay. well. Before we get onto this one, I want you to keep this one really short because I know it's over there and it's more yes. interesting than sitting in a glass case. Perfect. So maybe super top line on this and then we'll, we'll keep you in suspense. Because we'll go and see a bit more of it over there. So if you think of a lot of the connectivity we mentioned with that camera, yep. we have packed that into this camera, slightly different lens and sensor setup. Mm -hmm. But this is dedicated for outdoor use. Okay. So that's for indoor. This is dedicated for outdoor and it can take quite a bit of a beating. So yeah, I'm excited We're to tell you see a bit that more in about a that. Bit. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, and uh, well the final section of the new yes. product is uh, some new Cinema EOS products. Now mm -hmm. we've kind of you've touched on them a little some bit, of them but we've let's seen just already. give them a little yeah. bit of an overview of what we have here. Exactly. So uh, here we have the CNE 20 to 50 millimeter T2.4 yep. that we saw we talked about over, over there. there. So this is part we call the Flex Zoom series, mm -hmm. and obviously it's sibling the CNE 45 to 135 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Key point with these, as well as the beautiful image quality, is of course that constant T2.4 uh, T value. That is really, really, really it, powerful. It just opens up a world of shooting possibilities. It does, exactly. Uh, okay, and then... So this is from the Cine Servo range. Um, again, as I said, this is a perfect blend between cinema lens optical technology and ENG broadcast lens technology. Sure. What we're seeing now is a rise of cinema lenses, or, or full-frame cameras, should I say, being used for live broadcast production yeah. as well. Yeah. So these cameras are perfect for that because they have that same form factor that those guys are used to shooting with, but they're giving that cinematic edge to the image quality. And again, with that 1.5 times extender, this camera is optimized to work with super 35 millimeter or of course full frame sensors as well. And these also find a fantastic home away from that live market and things like documentaries, of course, and things like that. Perfect, okay, and then we've got a, an expansion and yep. oh, the R5C. So let's deal with the expansion because we've covered the R5C significantly. Already. We have spent, popping up a lot around this show. Um, so, the EU V3 expansion unit. We already have the EU V2 and V1, which can be checked out at our touch and try area. The perfect thing with this is, as I was talking about live production, so this now uh, enables our EOS C500 Mark II and EOS C300 Mark III uh, to work perfectly in a live multicam solution. Um, so it helps with things like Genlock, return video, all those things that you really need to have that multicam solution optimized. That's really nice. So it's expanding the capability of existing cameras. It is indeed. Brilliant. Giving them a longer life. Yes. Expanding their shelf life. Fabulous. Okay. Well, that's the new Cinema EOS mm -hmm. and, and I guess all of the new products. Yep. So let's make our way over to, I want to go to the, do you want to do the PTZs? First? Yeah, let's do the PTZs. We'll go to the PTZs because we talked about them here. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so we uh, well we talked about this one. Yep. But only in brief. We did indeed. So, so just maybe give us a little bit more about what's going on here. Of course. So what you can see here is two of our outdoor PTZ camera solutions. You saw here earlier the CRX 300. So now I can tell you a bit more about this mm. camera. Um, this has a half point three inch sensor, 20 times zoom lens, but it has that all important network capability. 
Um, so things like NDIHX, the Canon XE protocol, as well as standard communication protocols. Uh, for outdoor use, obviously very important to have built-in ND filters. Of course. Um, which it does, and as you can see here, we have a bit of adverse weather on the camera, so it's got a built-in wiper. Um, and fully IP65 rated dust and waterproof housing. Amazing. And then here on the left hand side? So yes, this is the bigger version. Okay. So this here doesn't have the, that IP connectivity, but it has serial connectivity and it has a very all important 12G STI, which we know is all important for that 4K 60p image quality. Very powerful 15 times optical zoom uh, and an IP55 rated dust proof and waterproof body. Perfect thing about these is with them being dedicated for outdoor, there is no loss of quality using any sort of housing or anything like that. These cameras are ready to face the elements straight out the box. Perfect. So these super specialist yep. for that outdoor world. Very much so. I think we're going to move from here yep. and we'll go and see the brothers, sisters, cousins yep. of these in the indoor environment and, and learn a little bit more about them. Awesome. This is our PTZ touch and try area. So we've got three PTZ cameras featured there. The three from our indoor range, which I'll go into a bit more detail shortly. What we also have here, uh, we have partnered with SearVision. Um, and this is their auto tracking solution, the SearVision Sweep. So there is a camera positioned up there. That camera can track the subject on stage and you can set positional areas, uh, features to recognize. And as they walk around, as you can see, it's perfectly tracking the subject on stage. So that's up there, is it? I that's up even there, right in the corner, it. secret camera just yeah. there. So. Okay. I'll just bring you over here. So the importance of this section here, normally when we've shown our PTZ cameras before, we've shown them as part of a system. We thought it would be quite nice this time to allow people to get up close and one-on-one -on -one with each camera individually, just so we can really show off the features that make each of these cameras special. Um, so what you see here is the CRN300. This is a uh, very affordable uh, 4K UHD indoor PTZ camera. So half point three inch type CMOS sensor, um, 20 times zoom lens, but again, as I keep mentioning with these, which you might see as a theme, it's got that all important IP streaming and control sure. capability, okay. which for these type of cameras is really, really key. Um, this is controlled by our free to download uh, remote camera control application software. So this you can simply just download off the Canon website. You can control up to 20 cameras um, just by themselves on this. Um, so if you're having a simple setup with this camera, this just goes perfectly with it. Fabulous, okay. And then what have we got here, the CRN500, I guess yep. the bigger, bigger brother to the 300. It certainly What is. do we gain by going up to the 500? So what we're doing going up to the 500 is you're gaining, um, obviously that one inch type, mm -hmm. CMOS sensor, 4K 30p, okay. 15 times zoom lens, obviously still has again, I'm sorry to keep yeah. repeating it, but it is so important for these cameras. Um, that connectivity, but what we're then introducing with these um, is things like Canon Log 3, wide DR mode, so you're starting to enter the world of the more broadcast sure. market with this one, okay. um, with the two XLR inputs as well, okay. um, and obviously, as with all of these, PoE connectivity, uh, which is fantastic for keeping that cable management down, uh, and of course, 3G SDR and Genlock as well. Perfect, and then at the far end, we've got 700, we the do. biggest brother. Yes, there is. So that again is the newly launched one that we covered. Yep. 4K 60p, um, built-in Pro Schools, SRT, uh, 3D for virtual sets, which also features in these cameras as well. Um, it is an overall broadcast powerhouse, so I really encourage any of you uh, who are looking at PTZ for broadcast workflows definitely to come down and check out the CRN700 and CRN500. Um, one thing we might have missed there is obviously the RCIP100 controller. Um, that can control up to 100 PTZ cameras at once, which would be a hefty task for anyone that has yep. to undertake that. Um, and you can also do 100 preset cam uh, positions okay. for each of those 100 cameras. Okay, so let's move our way down, and now we're getting into a, like a whole multicam broadcast. Yeah, so I guess. where we're showing our products as a standalone solution, there, this is where we really show how our products can be integrated uh, into multicam solutions. Uh, and here we've partnered with a lot of third party companies to really show how we can best optimize our products for this environment. So um, we have a, two of our 
um, professional cinema cameras there, both with the cine servo lenses on that I mentioned earlier. The important thing uh, with this camera here is we have the multi-line silverback. Okay. So what that can do for those who work in a broadcast environment, you work often with fibre camera systems, which will go into our OB truck or a studio, something like that. You attach this onto the back of our cinema camera, and with that package, it essentially turns that camera into a fully spec cinema style broadcast camera for live productions. And again, mentioning the cine server lens, whether you use the C500 Mark II or the C300 Mark III, you have that flexibility of the extender, whether it's full frame or super 35, we still have the lenses to cover it there. Perfect. Um, we also have, from our partner Mosis that we were in the XR solution with, we also have their MoRail system. Um, which can be used and controlled here, which gives you more options. When a camera is static for pan and tilt, you're, as much as you have that flexibility of movement, you're still stuck from the sensor. So this really helps you add even more uh, kind of tools to your to your toolbox, I suppose. Um, tools great for things, your shooting armory. That's the one, yes. We with um, with things for like news studios, things yep. like that, you'll be seeing a lot of these things popping up there. Perfect, okay. Well, that's, I think, the multicam. Yep. A little bit of ME. Yes. A bit of low light, and then Indeed. we're going to go and uh, get involved in some virtual reality. So this one is quite hard to describe to you without being able to peek. So I don't know if we'll see if we can get the camera into the peephole and see if we can pick up enough of the picture there, but we've got two of our low light cameras here. One of them is in the box, the ME20. Um, these are capable of incredibly, incredibly low light shooting um, with an ISO up to four million, um, which, is, which is insane. So you can see, see the brightness level here. You'd think there was a light on inside the box or something. Um, I don't know if, if we put the camera in there. In your little peephole, I mean, how it's, much it's, you it's can going to see. be black, I don't know right? if it'll pick it up because it'll be completely a, dark. This is a, a C200 yeah. versus an ME20. At but, least we get to see what a C200 can't see versus what an ME20 can. Exactly. So perfect application for these lenses. You're looking at things like documentary filmmaking, wildlife, all that kind of thing, and uh, certain security applications as well. These cameras are perfect. So that's the ME20. Uh, that's the one we've got situated in there. Uh, and of course, we have the very, very lightweight, very lightweight uh, ML105 as well. So it weighs in at actually just 775 grams wow. without a lens, obviously. I mean, it is, which... it's, it's a significantly smaller package. That, I mean, the 20 is not big. Yes. But this is very much discreet. so. 100%, which is for this, that kind of shooting that these cameras are required for. That's exactly what you need. Perfect. OK. So that's low light. Yep. I think we're going to go and get virtual now. We are. I think we're we going are. To go and see what's happening in the virtual reality zone. Yes. Um, maybe before we get in there, because it's a little busy, just give us an overview of what's going on here. Perfect. So what we've got here, we've got three booths which show off our virtual reality solution. So obviously there's a lot of elements that go into VR. Uh, what we as Canon offer is the lens and the camera mm -hmm. that can make this a reality. So we've developed a dual fisheye lens. So what the benefit of this is, is you only need a single sensor to get that 100, 180, 190 degree footage. Uh, so you'd use either our EOS R5, or certainly the Cinema EOS R5C, um, paired with this lens with 8K resolution. It will take the two separate images through the lens and it will get stitched together in the camera. Um, once that's done, that's when you need to work with people that we're partnering with. Uh, so here, for example, we have Lenovo uh, and Vario. So Lenovo, obviously, as we know, uh, make very powerful PCs for 8K. It's obviously a very heavy workflow, so you need a very heavy-duty PC to get the most out of it. And Vario for their headsets, um, very, very high-resolution headsets, that which give you, obviously, that immersive look that you certainly need for virtual reality. It's really nice. I mean, this, this lens came out last year. Yeah. It's really nice to see Canon moving into new areas mm. uh, and having a, a virtual reality solution. Yeah. You know, piecing all these bits together can be really challenging, but yeah. it's like you've, you've put it together and explaining mm. it to people so they can really yeah. make the most of, of what you're offering, which it, is really nice to see. Really exciting as well, the fact, as you said, that it's so new, mm -hmm. the fact that this far on we've now got three booths when the last well, trade show we had in Europe, we had one. We've now upped that to three, and for such a new product to be so popular is fantastic. Absolutely. So this is the virtual reality zone. I think we'll yep. scoot our way yep. maybe round the outside of it and we'll end up with a nice overview of the stand, but I'll put the broadcast. Sounds good. So I guess traditionally broadcast lives yep. at IBC. 
It does indeed, um, the home of. Absolutely, and now you've got, well, the broadcast area and the broadcast lens. Yep. Uh, what are we going to see up here? So what you're going to see is a selection of um, cinema lenses. Uh, so we've got, well, you'll see more when we get up there. Uh, we have uh, two different types of ENG lenses, uh, and we also have uh, those very big heavy-duty box lenses as well with those really long focal lengths. Perfect. Come on, then. Let's make our way up. Go straight okay. to the big, biggest one first. Well, you know, <laughs> I drew me in. It's the way it has to be done. So this product was also launched last year. Mm -hmm. You saw in the Touch and Try very briefly, we had the UHD Digi Super 122. This is the UHD Digi Super 122 AF. Very powerful lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same as our flagship um, in there with that really powerful thousand times zoom. The extender, it can actually go to 2000. Something important that we've added to this lens is autofocus. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're trying to do with this, is this isn't trying to replace what the operator does, because you, I think you know as well as I do, the skills that these guys have is phenomenal. So we're not trying to say we want to replace what you're doing. Now that we're in the world of 4K where focus is so much more critical, there are certain instances, for example, in motorsport or run it where there's a fast subject you need to track going close further away that can obviously be a bit more difficult to keep in focus so sure. if you need you can just whack using the new controller here um, you can just pop it into auto mode it doesn't have to be on the whole time uh, you can have it on the whole time or you can do it like a one shot so just that moment when you do need that bit of critical focus uh, this can support that so it's enhancing the capabilities that the cameraman already have giving Certainly them another is. option yes perfect okay uh, and then well, three more, what else do we have here? So, if we what go to this one, yeah. So this we have the CJ18 by 7.6B. Um, this is part of our UHD GC series. UHD GC, GC meaning general class. These lenses are perfect, they focus on operability. Um, what they're very good for is, we're still in a part in the in broadcast industry where we are still sitting in that HD 4K still not gone fully to 4k yet so these lenses here are perfect for those who are probably still working across both um, who don't need to make that investment in the full 4k glass yet uh, this lens is perfect covers the focal lengths just perfect for what a lot of people require so certainly a really popular lens for those going kind of across both, both okay. formats perfect we'll come down to our last uh, our last two yes so here we have the cj 20 by 5 uh, this is our um, XS series. So this is the one, the next series up from the GC. Yep. Very, very high powered optical performance. Very lens, obviously virtually no chromatic aberration and things like that. This lens was made because there was a requirement for kind of like an all rounder lens. So like flexible. So you, you, you would usually have some based around the wide end, some in the mid, some in the telephoto. This lens covers a perfect amount of wide to telephoto to sit in that perfect all-rounder. So if you're needing quick, if you're not quite sure what you're going to be doing, or if you're changing up and chopping and changing um, your positioning a lot, this is the perfect lens that will have you covered for all, all scenarios. Okay. And last but not least? Last but not least, this is the beast. Uh, so this is the CN 20 by 50 millimeter. Uh, this is the biggest lens in our Cine Servo series. So you've seen a few of its siblings downstairs. Um, this is an incredibly powerful lens, as you can see. This also features that 1.5 times extender, so whether you need it to cover the full frame or the Super 35. The long focal length on this, the 50 to 1000, definitely makes it really, really popular for things like documentary shooting, wildlife shooting. Um, if you guys watch any BTSs of the kind of documentary or wildlife, mm -hmm. nine this times out of 10, you yeah. do see this lens popping up on there. So beautiful, fantastic image quality and an incredibly long zoom range. And it's nice to see, I guess, the family of, of these mm. broadcast lenses. You know, you've got something for each of them. Yep. A solution for everybody, I guess. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jack, no, for the thank tour. You. Um, it's quite nice to stand up here and just take see an overview everything. Of, yeah. of what's going on and, and realise that it is actually incredibly yeah. full. Mm. There's a lot of different products, a lot of different solutions yep. for, for everybody. Yeah, a lot uh, of hard work's gone into it, so it's fantastic to see. Absolutely, it's kind of a one-stop shop to see everything. Yeah. Brilliant, thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you.